Hey everybody, Eggers here. Welcome back to the Long Dark. All right, so we have our winter coat, and I think we're going to. Sorry, cat's playing again. I don't know why they decide to play exactly when I'm going to start recording, but that is life. So anyway, we got the uh, coats here, as you can see. We have a pretty good warmth bonus going on. Almost yeah, like over 40 degrees warmth bonus, windproof of 20 degrees Fahrenheit. So yeah, not too bad. Um, let's take a look here. I think most of our, we can break this down. Let's do that real quick. Harvest it. Takes five minutes. No big deal. So what I'm going to do, I, I think I'm going to make a few more arrows before we head out. And then we'll probably head out. I don't see any real reason to stick around here too much. And try to get that moose if possible. I'm going to try to hunt for it uh, at the trailers just outside Carter Hydro Dam. Yeah, because there's a good safe cave at the ravine. Uh, in case we do need to uh, seek shelter there for cabin fever or anything like that. It's, it's the, probably the safest cave in the game, I would imagine. Um, Alright, so let me take a look here at my supplies. Let's go over here first. See how we're doing. I don't... I know we got lots of... We got five arrowheads. 32 feathers. So we can make... Easily, that take 15 feathers because it's three per arrow. So... I never thought I'd be... Dying uh, from starvation. Sorry, did I say 15 arrows? I'm at 5 arrows. It's going to take uh, 15 feathers. I don't know if I said that right or not. Anyway, she distracted me when she started talking. Um, yeah, so we'll do that. And then we'll head on over there and see if we can't hunt the moose. I think it's probably one of the better places to try to hunt the moose. But yeah, yeah let's do that first. Let's uh, grab these. Now, these are going to take an hour and a half to make each. So, hold on. Cancel. I already got three, so I need 12. There we go. 12. Good. Now I need uh, five of these. So I need one of those and one of those. And I don't think I can do that here. I think I have to... Yeah, I think I have to be at the... Yeah, I have to be outside. And it's going to take... Uh, hunting knife or hatchet. Now, uh, it's been mentioned a couple times, and someone mentioned in the last episode, that if I don't use the... If I drop the hatchet, I believe is what they said, before I use it, it'll actually craft faster because it defaults to whichever... I don't know. If you carry in both of them, it defaults to the hatchet, which is slower, or or vice versa. It's going to default to the hatchet, or to the, to the knife. One of them, if you drop it, it'll actually have a, a lower time to craft, so... Let's test that out real quick here. See, see if that's still true. You gotta be careful here. I think you need to be a little cautious. Eleven degrees, not too bad. The nice thing is with this coat, coat now I should be able to stand out here with a little more impunity. Still, nothing I can do there. I was hoping like some sort of hot fix would change that, but apparently not. So let's try dropping. Let, hold on. Let's first of all look here. See what it says. It's going to take 53 minutes, right? Okay, so let's try dropping the hatchet. Let's see if it changes this. I don't know if it works here or not, but 38 minutes. There you go. So it does. Now, if I pick this back up and I drop the knife, it should be 53 minutes, right? Yeah, 53. Uh oh. That's what I meant. That's why I was saying we should be cautious about. I heard the bear. Where's he at? I heard the bear. Did you guys hear it? Alright. Get low here. Warm up again because I lost a little bit of warmth just by experimenting there, but at least we know now. So... Uh, I think I'll leave my hatchet here. Hopefully I remember it. If I don't... Oops. Man, I don't know. I kind of think I should drop it right out there and then pick it up right away when I get done. I think that's the best course of action. But, uh... Yeah, let me see if I can do anything else here while we, while we wait. Six arrowheads. Oh, I already had one on me, so I need three more... Three more of these. There we go. How many do I, arrows do I have already? 
I think I have four, don't I? Yeah. So if I get there, yeah, we'll be up to ten arrows. That won't be too bad, actually. I do have to start thinking about maybe making a new survival buff, though. I don't think I can repair that. Um, and then I need... Did I get my... I got 18 feathers. Yeah, that'll work out good, because I'll get six, uh, six arrow chefs out of the, uh, two saplings that I have, so... Work out pretty good. Okay, we're, we've warmed up a little bit more here. Let's poke our head out, see what's going on out here. Is this... Is there gonna be a bear out here? I, I swear I heard the bear. Oh. I wonder if it was a bear or if it was my stomach. Oh, you know what it was right there? It was the wolf killing that deer. That's what that was. Should we? I think we should get ourselves a couple uh, hides here. Free hides. Let me get an extra hide here. Opportunity's knocking. Let's see if I can launch this one. Over his head. There we go. So we get a couple free hides out of that. Where's my arrow? Give me my arrow. And now I want to go get my other arrow. There we go. Alright, let's grab these while we're here. So that's what I heard. You heard the heard the uh, deer g uh, falling down. Going, Arr. Okay, so... Wasn't planning on doing this, but... Let's, let's do this. Alright. Let's run inside and warm up. I think, uh, I think I can get up this way. I think I've done this before, haven't I? Yeah. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Hold on. Uh, okay. There we go. Yeah, so you guys probably heard about the, uh, well, I'm sure you have. The, uh, shooting in the Oregon District in Dayton. Yeah, I was, uh, I was working that night. Um, I'm right on the border with Montgomery County, which is the county where it happened in, and they dropped the uh, countywide 99, which is like all officers respond. Um, so I was literally on the border. However, we used a different radio system, so I never got the uh, countywide 99, but I was right on the edge. Had I uh, been like one jurisdiction over, I would have been responding to that. But that was uh, crazy. Those officers did a great job neutralizing that suspect quick. Man, they got there fast. But they have them posted up there. It's sort of like a night spot. It's just like a, a street where basically there's nothing but bars there and uh, uh, things like that. And uh, it gets busy on the weekend, so they always have officers posted there. And uh, they did a good job, what can you say? Okay, so let's drop this somewhere. Heck, I'll just put it right here. I got some pelts here. I'm trying to get my pelts. Let's move these pelts over here. We got rabbit pelts strewn about here a little too haphazardly for my liking. Alright, I'm just going to drop my... Uh, there we go. Wolf pelt. I got two wolf pelts. I need to drop two of them. Alright, one, two. There we go. So we got two wolf pelts down there curing. Always good to have. And we'll warm up a little bit before we head back out. Alright, well, I wasn't expecting to get, you know, some free meat and all that stuff, but we'll take it. So we'll work on that first. We'll dip out there and, and grab all the resources from them, put them back in here, and uh, this game's like that, you know, you just start to uh, think you're going to do something at the start of an episode, and opportunity takes you a completely different direction, but that's okay. I'm alright with it. So, I did not know any of the officers involved, I read the names, I didn't know any of them. Well, like, all of them except for one, there's like one sergeant who joined up in 97, so he's like, you know, right on the edge of retirement, and then everybody else was like, sworn in on like 2016 so they only had like three years experience but honestly three years in Dayton is like probably 15 years of anywhere else typically uh, unless you're talking about another big city but if you have three years in Dayton yeah you probably have about 15 years equivalent experience anywhere else so those guys did great hats off to them good job especially a uh, good job to, to the bouncer at Ned Peppers who uh, let everybody in and then barred the door so the suspect couldn't actually gain entry and that's where the cops when he tried to get into that door he wasn't able to get into that door and, and the cops that were chasing him uh, were able to uh, you know get a good platform and take some good shots at him and take him out so 
Anyway, oh man, mental health, dude. It's, uh, we need to really bring back the uh, old days of uh, having institutions for people that are obviously a threat to society. I mean, I have, I have people, I have at least two or three, four people in my jurisdiction I can think of off the top of my head, and there's probably more, where if you arrest them, you know that they're not going to be found competent to stand trial. And in my opinion, if you're not competent to stand trial, um, then and you, and you have like those violent tendencies, you don't need to be in society. I'm not talking about someone who's autistic or something like that. That's that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is somebody who has like those dark fantasies, who uh, is clearly freaking absolutely off their rocker crazy. They need to just be separated from society. And um, I mean, ultimately, it ends up costing them their life. That's not if you want to talk about fair. It's it's not fair to them either. Let alone the victims. Um, so yeah, I think it's it's much more humane to actually remove them from from society. Um, all right, that being said, I think we've warmed up enough so I can go back out and do a little more harvesting here. Those, uh, yeah, those officers did a great job just going straight towards the threat. Man, that's, that's what you gotta do. You can't sit back and wait for SWAT or try to set up a perimeter or try to negotiate. With, when you know try to try to go that route it's you got to stop the threat immediately as quickly as possible and we're trained I mean that's how we're trained you know uh, in an active shooter scenario the first officer there if you know ideally you want to get four officers there before you go in so you can do like a diamond formation but if you're if your next officers or your your officers coming in are like more than 20 seconds away or not right on your butt when you come into that parking lot you got to, uh, you got to, uh, go in there yourself. And that, that's just understood, so. I want to get this thing curing, uh, before we grab anything else. Alright, let's head on back in. I think, there we go. There we go, I Optimize my route there. She's starting to get tired, isn't she? Oh no, okay. Never mind. I misread my uh, stamina meter. Disregard that. That's our temp out here now. Oh, it's starting to get a little, little frigid. That's okay. We got the main parts that I wanted. I really want the hides. Cold. Uh, what did I just drop? I just dropped leather. Hold on. That's the wrong one. There we go. Yeah, deer hide. That's what I wanted to drop. Uh, I saw green there for a second. It's not going to let me drop it now. There it is. Okay, perfect. Okay, is that floating? Yes. It's the magical floating deer hide. Alright, so we'll warm up back in here again. I might go out and do the uh, arrows because I think I'll be protected from the wind if I because I think the wind was coming this way and I think if I get behind the shed there where the uh, workbench is I can be protected from it so I should be able to do that rather than stand out in the middle of the open uh, frozen lake there or not lake but frozen water the ice and uh, try to harvest more of the wolf or the deer I think it'll be much better served just doing that so, we'll do that. Double check, see what I'm carrying here. I am still carrying both of those. Now, it would be nice if you were about to do some crafting, if it would actually let you pick which one you wanted to use, just like you do when you're harvesting an animal. But they haven't added that. I don't know why. It doesn't seem like it would be too hard. Because they already have it elsewhere in the game. So, I don't know. I don't think I'll need the heavy hammer on this mission, because, uh... I'm going to be heading down to... I'm just going for the for the uh, moose. I'm not going to go all the way down to the uh, train maintenance yard quite yet. So let me put my heavy hammer somewhere over here with my crafting stuff, I guess. Yeah, let's see if I can drop it here. There we go. I'm going to put it up here. That's a nice little spot for it. Man, what the heck, let's put our tools up here too. On our pry bar. 
There we go. Easier to see. So yeah, when I'm walking around here, I won't miss it. Okay. Well. Thirsty. A little bit thirsty. That's good. Okay. Unfortunately, those carcasses are going to be real frozen by the time I get back out there to harvest them. But let's just pass time until I warm up. There we go. Let's head back out see if I can maybe get a couple uh, arrow shafts done real quick here. Oh, the wind's kind of going... Okay, we can make this work maybe, I think. Yeah, it'd be nice if I had my shelter to use. Yes. 23 degrees. Yeah, that's not bad. We can make this work as long as the wind doesn't shift. Uh, let me drop my... Drop my uh, hatchet. Now it should drop it to 28 minutes or something like that. 38 minutes. Much better. Oh, it only gives me two two arrows? I thought it gave me three. I mis, misjudged it all. Yeah, I could do that. It's going to take one and a half hours. I don't think it matters for that time. Yeah, it's, it's the same no matter what tool I'm holding. But, yeah, thanks for the tip. That's a good tip. Hey, let's get back inside. Let's get back inside. So we got some arrow shafts. Not bad. Take a look here. Uh, still have one more sapling to go here. We've got three of these. Wait, maybe... Oh, it does give you three. I had one of, out of two that I could make. So I have one out of two birch uh, saplings is what it was saying. Okay, okay, I was right. So we'll warm up again and then run out there and do the same thing. And then we'll be ready to make some arrows. When this weather lifts a little bit, I, I can't stay out there for an hour and a half straight. Uh, not in this weather, and I don't want to make a fire and use up a, a match to do that. When we can just wait until we have better better weather with some sun, and I can I can start it with a magnifying glass. Plus, so get a fire going, and then the winds shift and put your fire right out, or you have to have four fires going, and it's not very efficient or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So it's just. We can wait for better, better opportunity. So let's warm up here again. I wonder if I can read a book. Hold on. I think all these books have been read. I wonder if I'm carrying one. I can't remember. I would probably need to eat something because I'm hungry. And you can't, you can't apparently study while you're hungry. Okay, so here's the sewing primer. Use. I can, I can do that. Um. I want to eat. Okay, I don't have anything right here. I think I got some stuff out here. I'll get put about 250 calories on board. Yeah. We'll eat a little bit of that. There we go. That should be enough. Let's head back in and do some studying. I think that's the last book that I have that I can use. There we go. Anything right now. Do some research. There we go. All done. Let's drop that book and where to go? Go underneath there? Yeah, there it is. <laughs> I can't get to it. Hold on. Just pick it up. Just pick it up. There we go. Pick it up. All right. It's my messy library, and we're gonna drop that deer skin again. There we go. Good enough. This one over here. You know what? Let's pick these up. If these are all cured, let's just pick these up. Oh, those aren't all cured, but that's okay. We'll just make it one big pile right here. There we go. All right. I also think either President Trump or or Vice President Pence is coming to my wife's hospital, Miami Valley Hospital tomorrow they're uh, they're locking down a, a, a break room and part of a floor that she tends to work on um, for uh, I guess the uh, Secret Service is in there doing a pre-assessment that they always do whenever they have people come and visit 
they painted a big eagle somewhere in there, so <laughs> I'm interested to see if there's going to be a like a press conference type thing from that room. But if you do see a press conference with an eagle involved or something like that from Miami Valley Hospital, that's that's my wife's break room normally. She's not going to be able to use it tomorrow from like eight to one or something. So, but they haven't announced anything, so I think it's going supposed to be sort of a surprise visit. That much fanfare uh, before the visit. Okay, so we're fully rested. I don't know why I was just wandering around there. Just talking. That happens to me. You guys have spent 38 episodes with me or 39 or whatever it is. Y'all know by now. Y'all know. Okay, this might not be good for. Okay, I can. I'm sheltered there. Nope, I'm not sheltered here. Negative one. Let's see if I can get another one done. Yep. We might get a little cold on this one. Yeah, we're cold. We got a little cold. Condition took a small hit there. I, I just wanted to get it over with. <sighs> now she's starting to get tired. Sunset's starting to happen here. All right. So yeah, we got all the components we need to make those arrows. We got the, uh, we got our shafts, we got our arrowheads, and we have the correct number of feathers. So that's where we're at now. How are we doing, cabin fever? Not so good, are we? Nine percent? That's not too bad. Not too bad. Hypothermia sprain. Those will go away shortly. Let me uh, run out here. Grab some. Uh, I have some food on me. I don't need that. But I, what I do need is water. I do need water. And this water out here, I think, is not not potable. So we can't drink that. I find yeah. To eat. <laughs> Unsafe. Yeah, we don't want that. Okay, let's head on over here real quick. Oh, we still got a wolf over here to carve up. I forgot about him. What all he's got. What all has he got? Oh, is there a sh is there arrow there too? Oh, I forgot about that. Okay, so we can come back and get that too. Got lots of things to do around here. All right, let's head on. Yeah, let's head on back. So, my last day that I worked, I had a motorcycle take off from me. It was a reckless. Got called in. It's supposed to be coming right down the same road that the police station's on, so... We were parked out in the parking lot. We just literally went right around the front of the building, and there goes the motorcycle. He was driving normal at that point in time, but before that, we got called in, and he was... Sp splitting lanes of traffic in the middle. Between, uh, on a two-lane road with, like, oncoming traffic and... Same same direction traffic, splitting the, the yellow line, the middle, the center line. And uh, high rate of speed. I got behind him, saw that his license plate was like aimed towards the sky, uh, which you see a lot of that on the, on the sports bikes. But uh, this one was like completely, I couldn't see it at all from the cruiser. So went to stop him for that. I saw him look back, continue on like he wasn't, pretend like he didn't see my lights. And then, uh, I bleeped my horn a few times, and then he looked back again, and I saw him, like, downshift, and I just went, up. Oh, here he goes. Sure enough, whoa, takes off. Pops a wheelie, takes off, goes flying through, uh, uh, it goes up to about 70, 80 miles an hour in a 35, and then it drops down to 25 through the old downtown district where there's a lot of foot traffic and a couple, uh, cross, cross streets, a couple state routes across there at some the major intersections. And I was like, yep, not chasing that guy. So I let him go, and he took off. Few, about a half hour later, a county unit from the opposite corner of the county said that he saw the same sport bike go past him, and he didn't try to initiate a traffic stop either because it was such a high rate of speed. It's just, uh, you know, just minor infraction, and not, it's just not worth it to have him driving crazy like that. So as much as we hate to let him go, uh, you know, and it sort of, Tells them, hey, if you just drive crazy enough, you, we'll, we'll have to let you go. We got to think about, you know, old people crossing in, in the old downtown area. They have a crosswalk there, and there's a restaurant there that's pretty popular with old people. And it's right around dinner time, and there could be some old people crossing right then. You know, you don't want to see them get blasted. Uh, it's not their fault. So, 
As much as that sucks, it is what it is. But it's kind of funny because I just knew the guy I, before I even tried to like really seriously stop him. It's like this guy's not gonna stop. He's gonna take off for sure. Never figured out who he was. But whatever. You know, you keep driving like that long enough, especially on a motorcycle, you you'll end up you'll end up really messed up. You'll end up in the hospital or, or dead easily. I mean, because you, you gotta be you gotta be a much smarter rider than that. So let's see here. Um she's pretty tired. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and hit the hit the sack right now. Six hundred and eight seventy five carat. I'm gonna get some more food here first. Yeah, I mean, you gotta be like a real cautious rider. Cars pull out in front of you, even when you're being a good, good rider, and you're attentive, and you're looking for cross traffic to pull out in front of you, and you're trying to see if people are actually making eye contact with you when you're approaching intersections. If you're a cautious rider, it's still dangerous. I mean, you'll have your scares throughout your, throughout your life if you're a motorcycle rider. Everybody's got those stories, but let alone somebody acting like that. Okay. One more drink here. Just to top off that little bit. And then we'll get a good 10 hours of sleep here, I think. Alright okay, guys, see you in the, ne the next morning here. I think we're going to wake up a little bit before morning, but that's okay. Survived yet another blizzard. No problems. 86 days, 12 hours, 30 minutes. Alright. Let's get that drink. We so desperately need. Great. Alright. Let's take a peek outside and see what it looks like. Oh, I need to find food. Negative 10 degrees. Eh. Can't really do much right now. Um, might be able to harvest a couple guts real quick. Or a couple pieces of meat at least from this wolf. It's like negative nine. Yeah, let's do a couple guts. 21 minutes. Yeah, we'll be cold enough in 21 minutes. It started to warm up, it looked like. Because it started to slow down. Yeah, it did. Negative two degrees. Alright, let's head in. Drop off the guts. Go out and try to get the other ones. Okay, there's my gut pile. Drop, drop. Yeah, let's stow some of these feathers. I don't need that many. I need 18 so I can drop. Picked up quite a few feathers there in the last yesterday, I guess. Oh wait, not even close to being warm. <laughs> I'm getting a little ambitious. There's like two. Eh, it might not be too bad of a day. It looks like skies are clear at least. So hopefully when the sun comes up, we'll uh, be able to start a nice fire. Yeah, I'm assuming I have enough wood. I, well, I do have some reclaimed wood here. I do have lots of coal. All right, I think we're probably all right. I just hope that I can do an hour and a half at a time with uh, hopefully without fire. Now, if I if I had the snow shelter still built, oh man, I wish I could get. I, that's that's so difficult because if you go away for any <clears throat> any length of time to go do some exploring. You come back and it's like destroyed. You can't even, you can't fix it. You can't get rid of it and put in a new one. Uh, it's just, it's just literally taking up a great spot. It really sucks. If I could get in there, I'd be able to craft without a fire at all. Right now, I, I believe. I'd be able to do an arrow at a time. And if even if it was a little bit cold, I'd be able to do an arrow, a full arrow, hour and a half worth of uh, crafting. Get back in here, warm up, go out and do another one. Uh, okay, well, let's just do sleep. The reason why I'm doing sleep is I just want to kind of have a full amount of energy today when I get started, when daylight finally hits. So, we're not quite there yet. We're cl very close. Oh, calm your... Calm yourself down there. Wind. Negative one. Negative 26. See? Ah, oh, man. Ah, come on. 
That ain't cool. That's not nice at all. Actually, it's very cool. That's annoying me. Am I going to have to actually go over to the gas station to do the arrows? I might have to do that. We're going to rest here for an hour, see what happens with the weather, and make a decision. Because, uh... Might have to go to the gas station. I don't want to run that gauntlet again, though. I hate running up and through there. I don't have to do that any more than I have to. I just want that wind to go away. No. It's still going to be cold out there. Unfortunately. It's going to be a nice sunny day. It is going to be a nice sunny day. We could probably start a fire, but the problem is... Is that wind gonna put my fire out and yeah and I might gonna be able to get it hot enough um you know I think we're gonna go for the gas station for this crafting portion I'll grab a couple pieces of meat I think I already have I already have meat there I don't need to be running around stinking like that so let's go back inside warm up because it is super cold and then we're gonna just make a run for that trailer I hate making this run All right, let's just warm up here. Okay, there we go. <sighs> I'm gonna grab some water, make sure I have plenty of water. I think I have some water there, but I'm not gonna risk it. Negative 27, yeah. Even if I get a fire going, I'm gonna have to use some coal just to uh, make it worthwhile, and then this wind will probably put it out, because it looks like some wicked wind's coming in. I don't know why I'm grabbing that. Didn't mean to. Whew, there we go. Heavy. Let's drop those coals. Here we go. Let's go. Let's get going. Man, just imagine if I didn't have this clothing. What is it? Negative 45 degree air temperature. That's horrible. Sun is slowly coming up, though. It's a pretty sunrise. Normally, if this wolf is out and about, he's over here like I would see him occasionally on the ice so I don't think he's out but I'm still gonna be very cautious it's just too cold to craft arrows outside I can't I can't stand outside for an hour and a half I can't even guarantee that the fire will stay lit so this is the best I can do all right I'm gonna have to slow down and save my sprint in case I need it Oh, we're gonna get caught in a blizzard out here. That's okay. I got a couple pieces of coal. I got wood. If need be. Alright, let's go. Make it quick. We'll warm up in here, and then we'll make it the rest of the way. Hopefully, without getting nibbled on. Let's do a sleep. Oh, dang it. Alright, well... I'm... I'm okay with traveling the road. Okay, let's just do it. And the reason why is... A lot of times in the... Now, I'm gonna go straight to Flare if I get attacked by uh, any animal at this point. A bear or a moose or whatever. I don't know if flares work on moose. I imagine it would. But, uh... I won't have time to do anything else, really. And I just want to, uh... Negative 47... Wow! Negative 52 degrees. Wow, that's cold. But the reason why I kind of want to move now with this blizzard is uh, a lot of times the blizzard gets rid of your wildlife. They all sort of go away for the time being. 
try to get some shelter here. Negative 16 degrees, that's better. Travel close to the edge here. Can I get any shelter? Yep. There'll be no shelter here. The front lines are everywhere. Alright. Do you have a car up here? It's not gonna be worth anything. It's just a slow death, a slower death. So the best just to shove on through, especially now that we're at freezing point. It really doesn't matter. It could be negative 150 degrees Fahrenheit, and uh, I'm gonna my condition will drop the same rate as if it was 29 degrees Fahrenheit. Once you bottom out and you go hypothermic or risk for hypothermic, it really doesn't matter. Might as well just keep going. Condition will be 20, negative 20 percent per hour, regardless of how cold it is at this point. But, you know what? If we get there, this is the type of weather you want to be inside crafting in. It's not like we're wasting a lot of opportunities outside. So we're in the village. Let's just see if we can get there without getting bit. having to use a flare. I've done a pretty good job keeping the flares. I don't think I've had to use one yet. But, probably famous last words. There's the hut. There's the hut. Going for it. Risk it for a biscuit. Oh, man. That's going to kill me one of these days. Oh mentioned that before, I think, just a few episodes ago. Did I not leave any food? Oh, no, I left the food over here. All together, right? I left everything together here? Yeah. And some good water. Potable. Unsafe. Unsafe and probably potable. Yeah, potable. Okay, good. Lots of coal, lots of wood. Some cans, in case they're needed. Not bad. Alright, let's get started. Let's, let's start crafting here. So, um... I don't need food to uh, craft. So I don't have to worry about that. I can just keep rationing my food here. Let's uh, start making some arrowheads, shall we? There we go, there's one. Two. Two more. We'll be able to get it done, I think. I think we got all our all of our arrowheads crafted that I can do at the moment right now. I'm pretty happy with that. Ten, ten arrows isn't too bad. So, I think that's what we have. Yeah. Oh, we got 11. And then we draw one back, so we have 11 total. Somehow I, I lost track. Alright, I'm pretty happy with that. But let's um, get another drink here, and then let's move. It's time to move. Let's see if we can escape. That's the next big question. Turned out to be a nice day. 17 degrees. Escape and evade, guys. Kind of want to go out to the ice. Yeah, I think I'll go up and over here. I want to get out to the ice. Okay, then we got a wolf there. And a deer there. I'm going to go towards the deer, obviously. That's a safer place to be. <laughs> Pro tip, if you have a choice between running towards a deer or a wolf, run towards a deer. And I'm going to use that deer as a blocker. Be 
Beautiful. So we ran into a pretty sunrise, and now we're run running into a pretty sunset. And we got a couple wolves here. I'm gonna I'm gonna sacrifice the the deer here for these wolves. Try to get that one that's going left. Hopefully, I think he's gonna be more of an issue for me. Yeah, it, it, one of those wolves is gonna key in on. Yeah, he's he's done here in a second. Look, there we go. Okay. There. Nope. He's he's being. Oh, that's a smart deer. That's a really smart deer. <laughs> I was not expecting the deer to do that. Pretty, really pretty. That it, that deer is gonna grow nice and old. He's gonna die of old age. He's got some game. No, uh -oh. where's that from? I thought I heard a bark. Am I crazy? No, he's going after. Okay, so that one's going after the deer. I thought he was coming after me. That deer is not going to live to be an old old deer. Quick, die of old age. Don't make me a liar. Die. Just fall over right here. Oh, too late. Too late. <laughs> well, not a bad episode. Got some more resources stowed away. Got some uh, arrows ready to go. I think we're going to be ready for a moose hunt here soon. Maybe we'll uh, try to move out. Move out tomorrow. In game tomorrow. I wonder what these things are for. Never really understood that. I mean, other than trying to uh, destroy ships, which I don't think is the reason why they would throw them out there. It seems a bit counterintuitive. It seems like they need a lighthouse out here as well, with all this land here, and then you have like a, a dock area here and a fishing, some fishing docks here as well. It seems like you need some lighthouses and some things like that out here, but for some reason it's missing. I don't know. Seems like a different, uh, sort of a dangerous area to try to navigate a, a boat of any real, real size. I don't know. I'm a landlubber. I mean, I love the water. I just have absolutely no no practical experience on it, so I'm very much a tourist. I'd like to chase one of these uh, deer into a bear one of these times just to see what happens. And they're sort of taken off in different directions than they normally do. Hmm. Take a quick look here, see how we're doing. Okay, I'm gonna grab some food for tonight. Let me grab a... Oh, that's raw. That's what I'm talking about. A little thousand calories. Got plenty of water. Alright, let's get some... Go back in here. Starting to get fatigued. You know what? Oh, no, we're too, we're too cold. I was gonna say, maybe I'll warm up for an hour and go out and do some work real quick. I got some guts over there I could harvest. I got, I got like four guts over there still. I think that's what I'll do. I'm gonna warm up here. Made it here just in time, but uh, I'm gonna warm up here. And then go out and try to get a couple more guts real quick. Since we do have a little break in the world. Not, not two hours, one hour's plenty. There we go. That's good enough. Let's go. All right. Let's see here. Wildlife is making all kinds of scary noises. Making me nervous. Be some more feathers out here for sure. 
It might be uh, like eight feathers. So there's two carcasses. So maybe they doubled up the feathers. Give that a shot. Yep, let's give that a shot there. Eh, I think I'm just gonna grab. Yeah. Do I want to? Yeah, what the hey? I know I'm gonna be cold by the time I get done, but not very. It won't take too much off of me. Yeah, just a couple clicks of the uh, or a couple ticks of the condition. We're sacrificed. Yeah, I'm alright with that. It's only 13 degrees. Should feel like a heat wave. This is like interloper, interloper spring break right here. All right. I think we're properly fatigued. Um, got some more guts for the pile here. Let's drop them off here. And then tomorrow we can harvest meat, I think. And may, maybe we'll do that first before we actually go, because I don't want to lose the carcasses. Because there's, what, two wolves, which is about eight pounds of meat each. That's like 16 pounds, plus a deer. So what is that, about 14, 15 pounds? That's like 30 pounds of meat out there. I really don't want to leave that out there. So I think we'll focus on that uh, tomorrow when we wake up, uh, weather permitting. Luckily, we can do small bits of that here and there. And then, after that, then we'll focus on going and getting that, that moose. Because I'd like to drop that hide off back here or put it somewhere inside to cure while we go do our long, longer excursions that we have planned. Makes sense to have that curing while we're doing that. So, all right, let me fumble my way back here towards my bed. Oh, there it is. Okay. Uh, let's get a little something to eat here. About uh, 750 calories there or so. 812, that's fine. Get a nice drink before we go to bed. All right. Looks good. Okay, so let's go ahead and get ourselves a 10-hour sleep here. See you guys here in the morning. We'll see how our condition is. Should be close to probably about 90% or so, if I had to guess. Take a look here. Oh, more like 98%. <laughs> Completely underestimated my recovery. And of course, we got ourselves a blizzard, but we can dash out during the blizzard to get like two pounds of food at a time. And uh, how are we doing with our clothing condition? Being running through that blizzard that we that we had on the way to the gas station. Uh, okay, so the deer skin pants could probably be uh, prepared stop. soon. It's going to take a piece of deer hide, which we have curing, which is fine. And, uh, everything else pretty good. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with most of that. So I'm looking here at the clock. We're coming up on the 50-minute mark. I'm showing about 48 minutes or so. I'm going to end this episode here. Let me, uh, check out how bad this weather is before we leave. Eh, it looks pretty nasty. Negative 45 degrees. <laughs> Ouch. Oh, man. I tell you what, when it's negative 45 degrees Fahrenheit, <laughs> I don't care how long you've been inside. You should not be feeling like you have cabin fever. You should be grateful that you have a warm place to stay in. And by warm place, I mean like 71 degrees Fahrenheit. Perfect. With no central heating. Or any kind of heating, for that matter. I like it. Alright guys, like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. Y'all take care. Thank you for watching.